What's up, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And I finally get to take you on my tour of Omnis, Absolute Editions, trade paperbacks, oversized hardcovers since we moved. So, welcome to your graphic novel book tour of 2022. Let's get started. And welcome back everybody. This is the most requested video that I get. When are you gonna do your book tour 2022? Well, today is that day. I did a moving video, so if you wanna check that out, click the link above and it showed you how to pack these books and how much of a hassle it was to move. So what I'm gonna do first is show you, actually what I'm gonna do is tell you to smash that like button, please, and subscribe if you are enjoying our videos. We put them out daily. Then I'm gonna take you on a tour of We'll start with the Marvel Omnis, then we'll move on to DC Omnis and Absolutes, move over to some trade paper bags, Marvel trades, DC trades, Indies, Deluxe Editions, and come back to show you what goes on back here, because I guess you're getting a little bit of behind the scenes with these lights. You never get to see these lights, but this is where the magic happens, but let me give you a tour of my room. I will be doing a manga tour at another time. I'm mainly focusing on Western and European comics this time around. To kind of give you a perspective on how I have my shelves laid out, I have these IKEA k is what these are. And this is where I put my Omni. So we'll be looking at the Marvel Omnis here soon. You may see manga in the back, but again, we'll be doing those videos later. So there are and four then, shelves for this. Yeah, and then we have IKEA Billy's over here for the trays, which we'll be looking at here in a little bit. But this is how I have these spaced out. It's like a, it's like a library. You need card catalogs. If only we had the mechanical moving shelves and you could fit okay. even like three more. I can be like Belle, but now let's start with this area. Okay, so here we have August and June 1961 and 62. Of course, those are very important dates and those are really unique Omnis that they're an anthology of books that came out that particular month and that particular month. One day we're going to get a March 1978, maybe. Then we have the Modern Cosmic Saga, which to me is a masterpiece, and all five of these books in chronological order are right here. These Omnis have been reprinted, Annihilation, Annihilation and Conquest, and The War of the Kings. And on my channel, I do breaking news, so I'm the ones that get to tell people that, hey, these books are coming back to print. So this one will be coming back in 2023. These two are out of print right now, but every year we do a poll on the channel to see which books they want reprinted from Marvel Comics and that's around February when I do it and I show it to the folks at Marvel and hey so far we've been doing really good all right then we move over here to Absolute Carnage, Acts of Vengeance, I love these connect I think I mentioned this every freaking time but I have to do it again and that is of course the wrong side there we go I love that that's so awesome that these are connecting covers you don't really see that often, especially with Omnis, because they're just big books. This is Alias, and then moving on to Spider-Man. So this is when people ask me, like, where do you put Spider-Man? Do you put it under S? Do you put it under A? And I put them under Amazing Spider-Man, even though we have Untold Tales here, and of course, Amazing Fantasy. These are the new printings with the small spines, as people call them, and then the original printings here. I still have my original printing of volume one. It's upstairs now where I keep it like a coffee table book. Cause I, I love that book. It means a lot to me. Then we move on to more Spider-Man in chronological order. And if you're a fan of chronological order on my channel, I do reading orders uh, because you know, these aren't volumes one, two, three, four, and five. They're just named different things. And I love reading things in chronological order. Which spine is your favorite? The picture at the bottom. Oh my gosh, I love, that's McFarlane right there. I love that one. That's I love uh, this the, one. Mm -hmm. I love how he's hanging from a web and of course that iconic moment. Oh yeah, if this be my destiny, good choice. I think that's Luke Ross right there. Alpha Flight, that's one that we need a reprint of. And my camera lady just hit uh, her shoulder. She's doing okay though. There's, uh, there's some tight spaces in here. <laughs> tight spaces, yes. Here's the follow up to the Clone Saga. Again, if you're interested in reading orders, check out the channel. I've done an amazing Spider-Man one, and my buddy Aaron Cobbs and I are going to be working on an updated one. I think these one. spines look good together. 
Oh, thank you. And then of course, this is where I'm putting Spectacular Spider-Man, even, even though it's not amazing, but it's the, f I guess, well, it's the third series featuring Amazing Spider-Man because he was in the Marvel 2-in-1, not Marvel 2-in-1, I'm sorry, Marvel team-up books. Then we move over to Atlantis Attacks. Here's the Avengers. All four of these are being reprinted, making room for a volume five. Will there be a volume five one day? Maybe. You get to find out here with breaking news, so. Another question. Which is your favorite type of spine, the bigger font or the smaller? Well, the older I get, of course, I appreciate the bigger <laughs> font. <laughs> but I, I do like, like the picture, the widescreen pictures yes, at the bottom are nice. I would like them combined. They kind of remind me of the Marvel premiere hardcovers, which I have some over there, so remind me to point it out okay. to you. Uh, remind me to remind you. Remind the audience to remind us. Here we have Avengers The Gathering and The Crossing. Heck yes. One of my viewers suggested... Uh, doing a segment where I just pull a book out and start talking about it randomly. And this is not randomly. I always plug The Crossing. The Crossing is an amazing story about the betrayal of an Avenger and the death of a couple of Avengers. For people that liked uh, The Avengers Disassembled, that was before it. And I can understand why people hate it, though. I what do to be you do fan. when you pull an Omni out of the shelf and read it? I'll show you here in a second. Oh, okay. I'll show you here in a second. Here's The Avengers by Jonathan Hickman. Both of these being reprinted. And I'll show you where I keep my review copies here in a little while. Well, depending on how long this video goes. West Coast Avengers. So really, this is what I'm talking about when I do reading orders. We have Volumes 1 and 2. And technically, this is Volume 3 with Avengers by John Byrne. Because here's where we have the stories that took place after that particular title and when it became uh, West Coast Avengers. Black Panther, look at all these Black Panther books, I love it. We have four Black Panther Omnis, we need more. We need. They've got the cool font. Th they have the coolest designs, I think, underneath the, like the dust jackets, you have this pattern. Right yeah, can there. you hold it up straight? Yeah, I don't know if you can tell, like right there. No, like hold it up, uh, there you go. Oh, like that straight, okay, yeah. sorry. And then flip it back. There you go, so. It's pretty cool. I like that. I like that they're doing different types of designs these days instead of just, uh, if you go back to look at the older Omnis, they are pretty much uh, the faux leather that we used to have with the title on the front. I think I still, when we get to the Uncanny X-Men ones, I'll show you. I there still have my original ones. There is a peak of manga back there. Again, he oh, yeah. will do a separate manga tour um, early next year. Early next year, sure. Keep me, keep me to that, though. Everybody in the live chat, ask every Saturday. And for people that are like, oh, you have every book. No, I do not. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm not the biggest fan of Golden Age stories. I know that sounds blasphemous to, so, to a lot of people. I've given a lot of my Golden Age Omnis away. Uh, but I kind of dig these two. These are the Golden Age caps. We've only got two of them. One was reprinted. And I don't have, like, Silver Age cap volumes one and two. Yeah, I'll, I'll get them when it's reprinted. Jack Kirby's Return to Captain America. This is a phenomenal Captain America right here. Uh, then we have Dan Jurgens, and then of course the Ed Brubaker, five part Omni, Rick Remender's Captain America, which we need a volume two for that. And of course, I'm hoping one day we'll have a Mark Grunewald collection. The new Captain Britain book. I actually gave away my other one. So yeah, on our channel, we have giveaways when we hit a certain milestone. Huge giveaways that makes my wife so tired even thinking about them because <laughs> the, the last time we did it, we gave away 50. I mean, I had to personally ship out 50 boxes. You can come, keep coming, baby. These are all in alphabetical order. It's not that I'm against giving a lot. It's just, it's a little overwhelming. <sighs> Packing them and then taking them to the post office, that takes some time. And I, yeah, I just, I like paying it forward. That's why I do it. Um, why is this one missing? The Brubaker book. Oh, somebody must have uh, borrowed a book What's and put mean? it in the wrong place. I didn't say it was you. I'm just saying somebody. You I'm know, reading X-Men, the adaptations of the cartoon. Now, I do have one custom dust jacket. I was thinking about getting another custom dust jacket for this one right here. Because this is technically your Daredevil Zero, right? This is right before the era of Brian Michael Bendis, and oh my gosh, look at this talent. Like, we go from Kevin Smith, Joe Quesada, of course, Frank Miller, but like nonstop, we have Kevin Smith. Then we get Brian Michael Bendis. Then we get Ed Brubaker. Then we get Andy Diggle. 
and some people are torn on his run, but I think his run was really good. The the stuff that he did with Shadowland, the, the Shadowland event itself with all the little miniseries, ups and downs. Then we get Mark Wade's run, which is so different than everybody's run before it. And then Charles Soule's run, bringing him back to the basics. And then, of course, one day I hope to get Chip Zdarsky's collection in omnibus format. Yeah, you do. Okay. That's your best friend, Chip Zdarsky. <laughs> then we have the Deadpool stuff. There's so much Deadpool. It's crazy to see how much saturation there was. Look at there all was. those names on the spine. By the way, that's supposed to be Cable and Deadpool. That was what the original title was. But for some reason, well, no, not for some reason. Just because... They were cashing in on the popular. name Deadpool. If you only you had glasses on, I could film you pushing your glasses up. Eventually. Actually, right. No, I'm not doing that. And these are all in chronological order. And it, what I was saying is like, um, it's weird to see like how much Deadpool was just saturated during that particular time in Omnis. And then we just, we didn't even get an ongoing series. I think he's finally getting an ongoing series again. Or it, it's already started with Alyssa Wong writing it. Then we have the Defenders. We're getting a volume two of that sometime in 2023. Look at one that of the, thick Doctor Doom. That's you were one of so excited. The coolest Omnis. When you received that in the mail. And not because I suggested adding Books of Doom on there, but just because it's such a cool story. Uh, we have Doctor Strange. We need a volume three really bad. Why is this here? This is not in chronological order. What's happening, Melanie? <laughs> well, doing this video, you're. Oh, you're I know what happened. Books. My brother was helping me put books up. So big shout out to my brother Tommy and my brother Manuel for helping me. But they don't know where these books belong sometimes. They just look at volume numbers. So yeah, I get it. You know, anybody that looks at your shelf are like, how in the world do you keep these in a row? Like, how do you know this would be the next book? To... I watched Near Main Condition. That's how I know. Um, which Doctor Strange is the hottest? You're asking me? Yeah. No, you asked the viewers that question. Nope. Uh, that one. Oh, okay. I think the order Jackson one. Geis actually drew that one. <laughs> yeah, sure. Then we have Earth X, very underrated series. That's um, Jim Kruger. And uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, John Paul, uh, what's his name? Uh, John Paul Leon down here. Sorry, I had to get down here. I think he passed away last year. We lost a lot of legends this year. There's Electra and then the Empire Omnibus. And then down there, see, I'm leaving room because I know I'm going to have to keep shuffling these. It's like a Tetris block. So down here, is where I have the Eternals and Evolution, or Evolutionary War. But before we go look at the next Omni shelf of Marvel books, I wanted to bring your attention up here, where we have top shelf books right here. These aren't Marvel, but I love this collection. This is some of my favorite books in my collection, and that is the Our Complete Peanuts. Our daughter read Peanuts. them a couple of times all the way through. Yes, so we bond over this. So this is everything from 1950. Night, uh, to 2000 uh, when he passed away and these are all the box sets and I'm if you're a collector the top without blinding um, there we go and if i was going to say the fanographics publish these and if you're a collector and you're like oh this is the first time seeing these some of these are out of print now don't uh, stress out too much because from time to time they reprint them now if you're an impatient collector there's nothing i can do about that but if you can wait around a year or two, sometimes they reprint one or two boxes, box sets a year. Uh, here we have the books that probably won't be reprinted by Marvel just because another publisher is dealing with them now. And that is the Dark Tower books and the Stand adaptations. This has some great J. Lee artwork there. Uh, Peter David writing some of the stuff, the adaptation. And then my wife, Sandman, the... Annotated Sandman, which you did a video of mm -hmm. last two years ago. That was, it feels like way longer than that. Now we're on to the Fantastic Four. Again, I try to put my things in alphabetical order. One thing you're going to notice is, of course, the spine difference. Uh, actually, that's one thing my buddy Johnny, who owns DyingBreedCollectors.com, noticed, and he sent me a copy of the latest printing. And I've talked about printings and reprints, you know, look how the size difference, not just with the font but the actual book. And so this is the latest printing that matches these books right here, the spines. And what I said about the designs of the books, this is the way that they all used to look. Um, let me get this dust jacket off. And I, I am a monster and I collect the standard edition dust jacket. So I like the modern covers. I know that some people, oh my gosh, this is taking me forever to do. Um, but this is the way they all look. They're almost like the Marvel Masterworks. So 
this faux leather, and then that right there embossed Fantastic Four omnibus, and they were all like that. This is Ooh, like showing the the Marvel the, Masterworks spine looks um, like. I'm showing the the stool and the action figure section back there. <laughs> that is not ready yet. Oh yeah, that is that is a mess. We wanted to make sure that we got this area ready and. Um, Ooh, you can see Battle Royale through there. Yeah, so that's coming in the manga, um, what's it called, tour. And my kids are helping me with the manga tour. That, that's going to take some time because some of my volumes I cannot find. But anyway, I'll be doing an overview, or not an overview, I'm sorry. This will be in my hall. Um, this, I'll put it back in the hall pile and you'll see where, where that is later. So that doesn't go there. Then we move on to The Fantastic Four by John Byrne. I decided to... Replace my original copy. I gave away my original copy, and this is the new version. Oh, so the, the numbers on the top. The well, and they're going with the logo of the actual comic instead of just this right here. So there'll be a picture and then a volume number. I already have a review copy, and I'll show it here in a little while. Then we have the classic. I love this run by Mark Wade and Mike Wieringo. Then, of course, moving on. This is all, by the way, in chronological order, as long as it's an omnibus. I don't put oversized hardcovers here, so you don't see the Dan Slott stuff or the Chip Zdarsky Marvel 2-in-1. Uh, but my X-Men is another story, and we'll get to those uh, probably towards the end of the video. But again, in alphabetical order, this is the only Ghost Rider omnibus. I'm hoping one day we'll get classic Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch. Heck, at this point, I'd take uh, Robbie Guardians getting a lot of love. This is being reprinted. This is the Volume 1 of Brian Michael Bendis' run which gives me hope that they'll do a volume two. And something you'll notice here is Guardians of the Galaxy by Jerry Duggan. But why is Infinity Wars by Jerry Duggan here? Well, that's because this is technically the follow-up to this series. That's why I keep it here, even though it's not an alphabetical order. So again, that's why I do reading orders on my channel. Here we have the only Hawkeye omnibus, and that is, of course, the classic Matt Fraction, David Aha one. Uh, Hellstrom, right there, or Hellstorm, and Heroes Reborn. This is the original epic. So this has Whoa. had two printings, because they didn't want you to get it mixed up with this one here, Heroes Reborn, America's Mightiest Heroes, which was the event during Jason Aaron's run on Avengers. Howard the Duck, this is still my original printing. I gave away the new printing. And then Howard the Duck by your buddy, Chip. Chipperoni Sadarsky. Here we have The Hulk by Peter David. Oh my gosh, yes. My favorite run on The Hulk. We just need Volume 5 and then The Companion. Here we have Greg Pax Hulk. I wish they'd continue this series in omnibus format. We did get OHCs. Jeff Loeb's Hulk, which is really Red Hulk. And I put Thanos here because this is really his origin, but he's part of the Infinity Gauntlet, so I wanted to put it here. So that's where the Infinity Gauntlet trilogy is. So you have Gauntlet, War, and then Crusade, and then Saga, because Starlin wrote those. Even though those take place later on. You have the Invaders, which was a really nice surprise. I really I hadn't read a lot of that stuff, and it was just a nice surprise when I got to read it for the first time. We have Iron Man. We're getting a reprint of the Silver Age coming in 2023. Oh, good, because people have been wanting Iron Man. Yeah, so I hope we see more like Matt Fraction's run. Or just, oh my gosh, that era of Director of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Len Kaminsky's run. So here we have an obscure book that probably won't get reprinted because of the rights. And that's John Carter, Warlord of Mars, Kazar the Savage, King in Black, Kirby, which was a nice surprise because there's a lot of war comics here. So this is what I do. I was just going to ask you to mention that. I'm currently reading you you Knights leave. of Pendragon and I take the dust jacket off. But really this is what I do when I take something off my shelf, but if I'm reviewing it, I keep the dust jackets on the other side of the room. Just um, to help you remember. Just to help me remember where my does. darn book is. Help me remember. Classic Loki. Loki, Miss. Uh, this is the uh, Journey into Mystery Loki, which is phenomenal, and then we're also getting a modern Loki, too. Luke Cage's only omnibus. Hopefully, we'll get a Luke Cage and Iron Fist, Heroes for Hire. Man-Thing, I hope we get a follow-up to that, like with the Inferno Man-Thing and a couple of other series. Uh, especially since Steve Gerber didn't really wrap up his stories in there. The Handbook, love those guidebooks. The, the, the Marvel Classics, which was a nice surprise. 
And then we have Marvel Cosmic. This is, I think, we're in the M's, right? So Marvel Cosmic, Marvel Horror, Monsters. And I believe these are the only books I have because I bought these used with Here, hold these, it up the other way. There you go. With these broad art protectors. So it's this plastic protector. Like I, I, the only reason I don't use these um, is because, first of all, it would be a pain to do it all. But, yeah, these are like plastic protectors for your books you put your dust jackets in there and it's cool and i bought these used and I, I know a lot of my viewers use them they just remind me of what i would do in peru with my school books so maybe it's like triggering memories i don't want to remember i don't know we have some marvel universe books like the one that was given to me by new spooey channel right there oh, these were so good this is like twilight zone marvel goodness the entirety of the master of kung fu and then, the, of course, the magazine right here, oh, Deadly. Oh, it's really nice, all together, Hands like of the same. Yeah, I figured I couldn't... These probably don't have a chance to get reprinted, so I might as well get them while they're still in print. Miracle Man right there, which was such a nice surprise this year to have all of Alan Moore's run. And now we know that Neil Gaiman is back doing the Silver Age, and hopefully we'll get to see the Dark Age. And excuse the mess in the background whenever I'm not focusing on the books. Like I said, we moved and it's a long process. If you check out the moving video, like it was two trucks. Yes, for his collection. <laughs> okay, we, don't, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have Moon Knight right here. We have Moon Knight getting all the love. Morbius, Miss Marvel. I'm hoping we'll get an expanded omnibus or wrapping up G. Willow Wilson series. Namor, we need another volume for that. We need more of this. New Warriors, baby. New Warriors for life. One of my favorite series. Volume 2 means the world to me. Just because it was a book that... That's the like, Omar Omnibus. That's what the, yeah, the Marvel office would call the Omar Omnibus. I think uh, there's 12 of us that bought it, though. So that's <laughs> good. dozens of us. <laughs> Power Pack. You know, I always say that, and we can keep going, but like things like Power Pack, when they go out of print, they're going to be impossible to find because there's a slim chance those get reprinted. Here's the Punisher, a character that I wish they'd go back into omnibus format with, especially those classic years. Huge fan of Carl Potts' run on the Punisher. Punisher War Journal. You have I mean, awesome artwork by Jim Lee, Wills Portacio. You have Secret Wars here. And Runaways. this one actually has Secret Wars 3. Yes, I love Runaway. this is the only book that I have a um, custom dust jacket because I didn't like the flesh tone dust jacket that Marvel gave us. So... I got that, oh my gosh, years ago when I first bought the book. I believe that book is only, no, it had a, it had one, um, one reprint, so it's got two printings. Secret Warriors, which is being reprinted. She-Hulk, getting all the love down there with four Omnis. And then we have the Silver Surfer, who needs more love. We need a follow-up. We need more Silver Surfer, especially the Ron Mars era, Ron Lim era. We do get that one, and that one's being reprinted. And Spider-Gwen, which is getting a second book in 2023 look how pretty silver surfer is now one of my favorite shelves that i've come to love in the last few years and that is the conan the barbarian <laughs> look how many there are not enough <laughs> melanie because we didn't get all That's of practically savage three. sword from marvel but titan comics is going to continue with the same I, I got to announce it and uh it's with the, the same, same spine dressing right yeah with the exception of marvel omnibus is going to say titan yeah and heroic signatures which is great right uh, but it would have just been nice to at least finish Savage Sword with the Marvel Omnibus. Because these are the original Marvel years. But this is all of Robert E. Howard's shelves right here. We have Cole and we have Solomon Kane. Up there we got some manga box sets. Which again, manga tour. Yeah. Uh, but then back to... There they are up there. Chronological order here with Superior... One of the skinniest like Devil Dinosaur Omnis right here. Which is a lot of fun if you've not read this. Very underrated. Hardly anyone talks about this Omnibus. Squadron Supreme, this is the newer one. And they stopped doing these. I guess they weren't that hot sellers, the Timely's Greatest. I thought they were really cool. The Thing, which is a really nice surprise. The Mighty Thor, notice I'm missing Volume 2. My buddy Philip sent me that one. Uh, but I'm sure Volume 2 will be reprinted. The classic Walter Simonson omnibus. And one of the things, this is the first printing, by the way. This is a big boy. Uh, one of the things that people dog on this one or don't like about this printing is the new colors. Now me, I was like, well, I get everything all in one sitting. Oh God, that's one of, Scourge, I love this issue. So because you get it all in one setting, you feel like it's worth it? Yeah, and it's all Walter Simonson, Ron Friends, Sal Buscema, 
it, you know, you still get all of it, but it's just the new colors. People, some people don't like it. I get it. it. Like yeah. the Sandman, I'm like, yeah, the colors weren't the best or made sense sometimes, but <laughs> that's what I read the first right. time. Right, <laughs> and if you, were, if you were coming from that era, you were like, oh, I wanted the original colors. And I'm sure the Epic Collections will be. And there might be a reprint of this with the original colors. Then Complete is like, my dumb butt can have both copies. Uh, here's some couple of the newer ones, like Jason Aaron's run, and of course, Matt Fraction's run. Look big... Thicker than a snicker, baby. Thunderbolts with a like volume Mo three Mo coming. Like Molnir, oh, One of my Fist of the North Stars fell in the back here. Um, it wants some attention. Again, in... Not Fist of the North Star. Uh, hey, 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 um, <laughs> uh, In chronological or, or in alphabetical order. Here's the Ultimate Universe. Ultimate Spider-Man 1. Where's 2? Well, at the making well, of this video... that's a spoiler on that one. It's not out yet. It's over the... Yeah, these titles. <laughs> like, there's <laughs> like, nothing I can do about that title. I'm sorry if you didn't know, but now you know. Um, these are the newer printings of that. The Ultimate, Ultimate X-Men with the Volume 2. We are getting an Ultimate Spider-Man 3. You know Ultimate X-Men is edgy when Professor X is looking mighty good there. I thought he looked like Grant Morrison in that picture. Uh, <laughs> the Ven Omnis right here. Ven Omnibus. Yeah. I wish they had done that here too. Yes. But they didn't. This is the Donny Cates one. And then all the way over here are the What If and War of the Realms and Young Avengers. I'm so glad they did this. Um... This didn't originally have the Young Avengers Presents, and I thought it would be a good time to add them in there. So I suggested that, and Marvel was kind enough to actually listen and put them back in there. So that was really cool. Here's the Star Wars Omnis, which, oh my gosh, if you've not read The Old Republic, I know it's out of print, but pick it up when it comes back to print, because it is so good. Just want to apologize again. I hope it's not picking up when I hit my headphones on the shelf that's behind me. Okay. Uh, this is the newer Marvel era of Star Wars Omnis right here. Like Jason Aaron's, we need a volume two of that, which would be the Greg Pak era, and then or the Kieran Gillen. Was it Jason Aaron, the author that when you interviewed him, he's just really chill. He is so really? chill, and of course the Aliens, which we're getting a fourth one. This is where Predator is going to go, and one of my favorite books right here, the Oz Omnibus. Now let's look at the DC books. Now before we look at the absolutes from DC. My wife had the wonderful idea of showing you what it looks like compared to the size of an omnibus. Because we showed you earlier what it looks like an omnibus from, to trade paperback difference. So trim size is bigger. And the Marvel and DC Omnis are the yeah. same size. Um, but here we have most of my absolutes. Not all of them. My favorite absolutes are behind me on my videos, which I'll go through here in a little while. So we have All-Star Superman, Dark Knight, Dark Knight the Master Race, and then a lot of the Batman ones. And they still all have great slip cases. Yeah. You could show a couple of those. This is the hardest one I have to like, because usually I like to keep this part, and I'm also a leaflet guy, by the way. Yes, I'm one of those people. Um, this doesn't have the words Arkham Asylum. There's nothing there, so I have to actually showcase it like this yeah, with the then, back of the slip case, the box. For you collectors, let us know in the comments. Do you put the spine? Out, or do you put the back of the slipcase out? Here, show another one. Um, sure, like this right here. This is the back, and then this is the slipcase. Now, this one here, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, did, oh, sorry. That's all right. Have signed right there by Tim Sell. We lost this year. Oh, wait. Um, and, yeah, your right hand, there. And. Your hand's kind of covering it. Uh, it's okay. We're just going to put it up. Um, that one means a lot to me. We lost him earlier this year, and he was one of my favorite artists, and yeah, him and Paydez, and it's just, it's been rough for a lot of us comic book readers that have grown up with these masters of the art, and it sucks, and, and Neil Adams, my goodness, now Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams, it's just weird to think about that. Um, so at the end of the year, I am going to talk a little bit about all the wonderful people we lost in the comics industry. So, that looks so, so good, catty-cornered. Or oh, thank you, thank you, display. thank you. It's because um, I don't have enough. And for people that are like, oh, you've got all the books. Again, I, I don't. I've actually missed out on some. There are some that I second guess myself that I'm like, oh, I'll wait till that one's on sale. For example, Batman Black Mirror. And I was like, yeah, I'll wait till it's on. Nope, gone, gone. It went, I remember when I saw it for sale for 50 bucks and I was like, that's just too much. I'll wait till it's like maybe 40, 30 bucks. I'll jump. Nope, gone. No signs of a reprint yet. Same thing with this. I've talked about this. my buddy Trumbo. Oh, dude, thank you so much. He he made me a deal for these, and my goodness, it was just a nice gesture. Then Kyle sent me this one. 
This is actually one of the first books that Kyle sent me. If you watch my haul videos and I say the Kyle pile, that's my buddy. <laughs> but these, I waited for something called the Immateria Collection. So if you've been collecting comics and collected editions for a long time, the Immateria Collection was going to be an omnibus of Promethea. And if you know anything about Promethea, the thing that makes Promethea stand out is that it is all drawn in this beautiful spread page format by J.H. Williams III. So every page in here is a spread page like this, making sure they're safe for work. I did the, not know that. Wow. Yeah, every single, it's a double page, you know, like this. In so, both books? Every book, all three books. Oh, so like what the two. Immateria Collection was going to do was going to be the first omnibus to be released in a widescreen format. And I was so excited about that project. J.H. Williams was like, as soon as I'm done with Sandman Overture, I'm drawing a cover. Bob's your uncle. Never happened. I'm so glad I got it's you set on It's set on the catalog for five years. They finally removed it. I think it's still on Amazon just to rub it in my face. I know it's in the DC catalog for sure, but never came out. Transmetropolitan, which surprisingly, they never reprinted anything past one. They only reprinted one. I said I would go back and revisit V for Vendetta, and I'm a man of my word. I plan on to. Absolute Wildcats. What can I say? I love the art. Wonder Woman. You I will love, notice I have... I love this so much. We talked about it in the book club. Oh, that's I one of my favorite reads of the year. The Omnibus. And, of course, Absolute Watchmen. I keep Doomsday Clock here because look at the designs here. Pretty cool, mm -hmm. huh? Look at that. That's awesome. I like that. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So then we go into what I call the Vertigo. We got absorbed in by the Black Label line, but that's where we are now. So mad so about this one. Are, are these as big as absolutes? Or are these back these to are Omnis? Omnis. Okay. We are back to Omnis. I'm sorry. No, I was just asking for the audience. But, but thank you for that. Uh, no. So I was upset because Volume 2 was solicited to have Brother Lono series. And if you have the deluxe editions, Brother Lono was not included in the deluxe edition. So a lot of people were like, oh, so it's solicited. Getting rid of my deluxe editions, going with the omnibus route. And if you look at the sizes, it's like they could have gone with eight more issues and given us something that, nope. They didn't put it in. And a lot of people were upsetting me, including me. I was disappointed. Uh, Animal Man, this is the original printing, Vertigo. I gave away my other, or I, no, I have the other one to give away. Animal Man by Jeff Lemire, The Authority, Book of Magic. There's one more Books of Magic coming out, Volume 3. Does this have the plastic no, protection on it? No, it just looks oh. like it. has got hmm. this gloss finish to yeah. it. Doom Patrol, and I was so happy to get Rachel Pollock's Doom Patrol. Finally, it was a book that, they canceled the trade paperbacks because they're saying the scans weren't that great. Hellblazer. This is the, the bad thing about this omnibus is that this is probably the best run of Hellblazer you're going to read by Garth Ennis. And it is the only one available in omnibus format. So, I mean, I would love to see others, of course, going back to the beginning with Jamie Delano. It's a cool logo. And, uh, you know, get it later on, even Mike Carey's run and uh, Azarello's run and Paul Jenkins' run. I, I want to see it all collected one day. This what is one of your favorite Grant, Grant Morrison, Morrison runs. Crazy Thanks. stories. Just uh, I Zombie. Uh, Kevin, we lost Kevin O'Neill too, the artist on uh, Extraordinary Gentleman. Lucifer. I love this design. Like beautiful designs over here in DC with uh, their omnis. But sometimes Planetary, which is being reprint. No, no, I'm sorry. Sleeper is being reprinted. It's coming out the end of December. And then Swamp Thing. Hopefully, we'll have an Alan Moore Swamp Thing with original colors. That would be cool. So my dumb butt can buy those two, because that's how I roll. And the long yes! masters of the universe. I have the omnibus. That's what I said on my intro. <laughs> but yes, that is the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe omnibus. Love that thing. All right, so many people have asked about these. These were the custom omnis that um, I ended up getting from Keith when he still uh, lived here in Louisville, Kentucky. But he, I think now he's living in Japan. Japan. But I ended up making my own, like the Outsiders and Batman and the Outsiders. Um, How did you make it? Took single issues and trade paperbacks, put them in chronological order. I made the table of contents here. I can show you. Um, made the table of contents like this. Did you personally make it? Or you Heck like, no. Yeah. So printed this out, the table of contents, and then put the single issues together. I did all that. This, I'm so proud of my design. So and these are the actual comics. Yeah, these are the actual comics or trade paperbacks. Because they're the same dimensions, as Melanie stated mm -hmm. earlier about the trim size. Then designed the back of the book, designed the spine. It was a lot of fun. 
I just don't have the time to do it anymore. Otherwise, I have a Superman project I'm going to get to one day. All right. Let's get to official ones, though. So, Blackest Night, Brave and the Bold. That is still, I think, one of the biggest Omnis. I think uh, X-Men Avengers beat it out, but that is still one of the biggest Omnis. Brave and the Bold, Volume 3. You had me at Jim Aparo's artwork. I don't have Volume 1 and 2 of the Bronze Age. We finally got Catwoman. Maybe we'll get a Volume 2 one day with Will Pfeiffer's run. Uh, one million, and one of my favorite covers, the lenticular cover. I think I point this out every time. If you feel it and you look at that. Hey, 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 it's not a record. All right. Deathstroke, the Terminator, and the New 52 one, which is okay, but this one was classic. Final Crisis, another biggie. Flash by Mark Wade. This is such a huge deal to me. One of my, 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 one of my favorite, favorite runs on Flash. And of course... Without this, we would not have this. And this is the Jeff John stuff. Still did not collect the final issues before Infinite Crisis, but... So it, you can do? see with these DC Omnis that I'm not having to zoom in because it, it's not a particular format with pictures at the bottom. Like, each one kind of has its own format. And usually what I like to do is keep Fourth World together, but my brother helped me, but... Um, this is the Jack Kirby stuff. I'm missing the OMAC. But, see the logo of Jack, the king. There um, we go. The logo's here of the character. So this is Fourth World, and this is Command D. Command E. And here we have Gotham Central. That's the original printing. New printing came out this year. I think I mailed that out to one of my viewers. Ran no, one of our 80, 70,000 subscribers won that. Grayson, which I'll be doing a comparison to the new Omnibus soon. Green Arrow, Volume 1 and 2. Another one of my most wanted Omnis finally coming out. Hopefully we'll get a Chuck Dixon one one day. Still some of my favorite Green Lantern Omnis by Jeff Johns. Peter Tomasi has hinted at a Green Lantern core Omni. Uh, but he's been, he's been saying that for about five, six years now. So who knows? This story's Maybe one fun. Day. At the Let's end, I kind of, eh. But the first, the, the, the two-thirds well, at Paul the beginning, Dini I like. is the one that did that. Mm -hmm. Um... Harley Quinn, all three volumes of that, including stuff that they did not solicit was going to be collected in the third volume. And stuff if you didn't know, Frank they're um, a married couple. Oh, yeah. Amanda, Jimmy Amanda does Amanda the Con. art, and Jimmy yeah. writes it. Hawkman, which we need more of. We need, like, Robert Vendetti's run. We need hat classic Hawkworld stuff. House of Mystery, volume one and two, and House of Secrets. Where's my volume two? Um, Infinite Crisis, my favorite DC event. And then the follow-up to that event, that's why I have 52 here. Injustice was a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, there's so many DC books. Like, every year I do my most wanted Marvel Omnis and DC Omnis. Marvel is a little harder to do because there's so many books they've done already. DCs, I'm like, da 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 da, -da this is what we need. Including some more Jonah Hex, Justice League Bronze Age Volume 3, JLI, JLA, oh man. New 52, hopefully we'll get some more JLA era, like Joe Kelly's era. Mark Waite stuff, uh, Justice League Dark. We're supposed to be getting a second volume of that. My favorite JSA, or my favorite Jeff Johns books right here. This is my favorite Jeff Johns run. I know it starts with James Robinson and David Goyer, but oh my gosh, that is stellar stuff. Legion, this is- Wow, Legion that takes up the whole spot. I love that, it? that's a cool design. <laughs> no, some people don't dig it, but I dig it. Uh, this is the five years later, Omnis. This, I think cheap graphic novels, um, which we'll talk about later. Our sponsor actually still has some of those left. As of this video, question, no no solicits for a volume two yet. Uh, Red Hood here. People are like, where'd you get those? Um, I do have a shelf of custom Omnis. I just don't ever really talk about them. Uh, same with Red Robin. And then we have some Spectre here. Superman, we need more Batman and we need more Superman. And like I said, this is wait, not- Wait, wait. What? Which? Uh, this is the death. No, oh. no, 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 because you've bought it multiple times. We Which bring version that is that? I think that's the fourth printing I've okay. gotten. Of that. It's not even my favorite Superman story. Superman, Batman, they at least wrapped up that series. Grant Morrison, Superman. Uh, Teen Titans, which they just reprinted volume one, giving me hope that they'll keep going, reprinting the series, and giving us that volume six that was canceled. The Jeff Johns reprint right here, Teen Titans, and then my custom ones that I made myself of Teen Titans. Wonder Woman by Perez, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal story. 
And that's uh, why I have the absolutes. Phil Jimenez, which is a little wordy. Gail Simone, Wonder Woman, and Who's Who. And I have Who's Who Volume 2 in my... To review uh, pile. Uh, yeah, it's an overview pile. And then the Zero Hour here, which is another Crisis, which was the first follow-up to Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, before we keep going with the tour, check out our first sponsor. If you live in Europe and are interested in buying and pre-ordering Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC books within the EU, flat rate shipping of 12 euro for all EU countries, bulletproof packaging, and all emails will be answered within 24 hours. They offer a huge selection of out-of-print books. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code near me condition, all one word at the checkout, to get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order of over 40 euros. Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Now that you saw my panning over of the Omnis, this is how I keep my trade paperbacks of DC and then other stuff. And we're going to take a closer look here in a little bit. But this is the independent stuff, which we'll be looking at next. But I did want to showcase how I have these all lined up here. And then over here, we have the trades across from this stuff here. So what type of bookshelf is this? This, this is a Billy. I usually use Billy's for my trade paperbacks or books that don't weigh that much. And this is a slimmer Billy, like one that's supposed to go catty corner. Okay. We'll look at the actual Billy's here in a little bit. But this is where I keep a lot of my indie books or books that, I don't know, mean a lot to me. It, it's kind of a... Uh, what is that called? A pish posh? Don't you? Pish posh. Pish posh. Mishmash. <laughs> Mishmash. I like pish posh. Oh my gosh. I really need to do a hidden gems on the first kingdom. I think I talk about this book so many times, but this is to me, Jack Katz. Just look at the amount of detail in his art. He did this all himself. It took him years, and I mean years, to tell this whole story. And it's wordy, it's dense, and it's just so freaking awesome. And the amount of detail that goes into each panel, it's insane. It, uh, this is such a cool story. And I do hidden gems every month. So if you enjoy like my videos of like top 10 best standalone graphic novels, this is usually where I come. This is actually how I got started. One day Melanie could tell you I didn't have a video idea. And I'm like, huh, I wonder what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to grab a bunch of books off the shelf and say, hey, these are stories I like, and you may too. And that's kind of how they got started a couple of years ago. But you have things down there like From Hell and the Master Edition. And My favorite thing is Monsters. Ooh. One day yeah. I would love to review that. You should. Because it is amazing. And I'm proud of the English department at my school for having dragon hoops like a whole... Here, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Um, pull that out. Having a whole um, class set, or more than one class set, to... Uh, for students to read and the texture is a basketball. Yeah, so some of these you may have seen already in either Hidden yeah, we, Gems yeah, we're or reading. that actually made it in my top 10 standalone graphic novels. I wish they would continue this series, but unfortunately we stopped with the sixth volume. Uh, there's the Tarzan little comic strip stories, Battle Pug, my Battle Pug is ridiculous. And again, some independent stuff and you'll see, you're like, what is... What's independent? Because I see some Image, I see some Oni Press, I see some Dark Horse. Independent turns out to be what my brother just kind of sticks into a shelf because I put him in charge of this area. Uh, and I'm okay with it. He put it in alphabetical order. And again, this, this goes to show you, like my buddy Aaron sent me this for my birthday. It was so sweet. But I've been looking for the hardcover of that. So there are things that I'm still missing that I'm always you know, on the lookout for. And I think that's, uh, that's the beauty of collecting. I'm not one of these guys that's like, I have to have everything now. Um, so when I look at my Norse mythology in there, like yeah, there, right there here, yeah. because I'm yeah, waiting yeah. for, I mean, eventually there's going to be a library edition of that stuff, but I'm not one of these guys that's has to have it now. I'm okay with waiting and the thrill of the hunt, if you will. And also it gets expensive because, oh my goodness, Essex County, when it, <laughs> when it is on sale, it's quite expensive, but, uh, there's a manga I've been searching for, for like 17 years. So I'm a patient guy. And down there are some other stuff. Again, in alphabetical order, or at least he put it in alphabetical order. Now to the trade paperbacks of DC. And I say trades, and I throw in some deluxe editions and hardcovers there. Standard size hardcovers, but no Omnis. Uh, this is Batman, and I've done a Batman reading order 
and all in chronological order so it spans all the way to this shelf leaving out of course the omnis because my batman omnis which you didn't see when we were looking at the batman omnis were over or when we were looking at the dc omnis rather are behind me where i sit and i'll show those in a little bit booster gold baby including the hard to find booster gold trade paperbacks the 52 pickup Catwoman, and you're probably wondering, wait a minute, doesn't he have that in omnibus format? Why does he even need that? So as a guy that runs the Home of Collected Editions, I have to have sometimes a backup of like some uh, stories that are available in trade paperback. And also there's this weird side of me, for example, that Mark Wade's run won't get finished in omnibus format. And That's I don't- That's not weird. Well, it's not because I, I, it is, it is, it is. Oh, okay. It's a little, it's a little weird uh, because it, then I would feel empty or, or something's missing if I'm missing volumes one, two, and three here. Uh, like I still have Green Arrow by Mike Grell here. Oh, they got some figures up to decorate the yeah. shelf. This, uh, these were given to me by Maddie and Tina a couple of years ago for my birthday. The discontinued Kyle Ray. I look at some of these trades and I'm like, that's discontinued. Oh man. Uh, Justice League, JLA. These um, Kyle sent my way. These are every single issue of JLA custom bound into these Omnis right here. And these are standard size, of course, because they're all the size of a trade paperback. Tower of Babel, which is a deluxe edition, which has missing issues from that JLA. But we need more of that stuff. And this right here, when I'm asked what my favorite Justice League story is, that is my favorite Justice League story. And that is the Injustice League. It's got writings by the late... Dwayne McDuffie and Ed Bennis does the artwork and Joe Benitez does the artwork here. But I love this story and hardly anyone talks about it. Like, Dwayne McDuffie's era in Justice League is just so forgotten. Then we move on to some Legion stuff, like Before the Darkness. Um, and the, uh, the Darkness Saga is actually a deluxe edition. We have Manhunter, Metal Man right there. Another underrated series. I think I did a reading order of this and I was like, and this is what we need for the Omnibus. The Phenomenal Nightwing, New Guns, the new Nightwing series, which is a great read if you haven't read it. Uh, the Ranthanagar War. And speaking of discontinued lines, we also only ever got five of the Robin trades. And these are the what's left of Robin after Chuck Dixon's run. You us to the Robin War. Secret Six, Suicide Squad, Supergirl, another series that was discontinued. I'm hoping one day, we're into the Superman era now, that we will have some of these, like somebody will be in the Collected Editions department going, all right, first order of business, actually first order of business, making Omnis of this era, but second order of business is let's continue some of these trades that were discontinued previously. So we're into the Superman stuff, which you've seen, that was my last big reading order I think there were a total of six parts of the Superman rating order, but these are the books that... And that's what patrons wanted, because on our Patreon, you can vote for oh, yeah. uh, the next rating order. Yep, yep. Uh, more Superman right here. Trinity, Wonder Woman. And then I stop in alphabetical order to reboot everything, because that's what DC did, and this is the New 52. All right, so down here, we have the New 52 books. This is when the DC Universe was revamped. And I keep all the trades together in order. And then the Milestone Universe, Last God, and some Wild Storm stuff. And then down here is some Rebirth trades, which I still need to pick up, like Green Arrow. So I've kind of given up on the fact that they might do a Green Arrow, uh, more of the Benjamin Percy run. That's where we uh, have the Turtles with the Compendium, and then the classic stuff. And then my favorite run of Turtles right there. The IDW collection. We have some Scrooge comics. These are not the Don Rosa or the Karl Barks era. They're European stories here. We have Darkwing Duck, which now Dynamite Dynamite owns the rights to. And other copies of Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. Some Transformers I found on eBay. These are oversized, but thought they were really cool because the Marvel UK line was unfortunately canceled. And we didn't get volumes. I think there were supposed to be eight of those. Oh, this is such a cool book right here. The quintessential collection. Just love the way that it is drawn. Like this old school style, even with the old cool. Look at that catch. 
Still got it. Uh, the old school colors. Then we get the Carl, Carl, <laughs> Carl Barks collection down here of Duck Comics. I need to pick up the latest one, actually. Down here, we have the discontinued G.I. Joe IDW hardcovers. And then the classic Joes. And some Mega Man stuff. Transformers manga. The Sonic comics. Then we have Fallen Angel. If you've not read that, it's great. It's a Peter David's series. Think of uh, that run as like Peter David kept writing Supergirl for DC Comics. And then Ghostbusters down there. Those are hardcovers. And the trade to end it. So then we move away from this area to go to this area here, which is a lot of the Rebellion 2000 uh, AD books, Terry Moore, which we'll take a closer look here in a little bit, but kind of give you an idea of the layout of this stuff. Uh, these shelves, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. Uh, the Marvel stuff over here, and then the image titles, which we'll look at. But I kind of wanted to give you an idea of what the layout looks like. Which takes us back to this, where the magic happens. So this is the 2000 AD stuff. Oh my gosh, I fell in love with Judge Dredd a couple of years ago with this volume. And my continuing overviews of Judge Dredd will start, I think, in 2021. But just the stuff they are putting out. A lot of it available through their only their website and some of them, you know, overseas. But these are now in color. They started in black and white. We have some more Judge Dredd, the essential Judge Dredd. Uh, some of these, of course, sent to me for, uh, for overview by 2000 AD. Some of these from my buddy Super Laugh Hard. Oh my gosh, I can't thank that guy enough. We'll, we'll get to something really cool that he worked on for me. Uh, this is, again, some more 2000 AD books. Some books by TKO. This was a kid's book, I believe. I don't know where volume one is. I think this is just the, the leftover. I'm pretty sure it was called. I don't know what Lydia and I are calling it. She was helping me with uh, that book. Uh, some more 2000 AD. Black Sad. One of the greatest anthropomorphic uh, characters. And it's just beautiful, beautiful artwork about a detective. It's violent. It's noirish. Oh, and the art is just stunning. Translated into English. The first book has three stories and then the rest are done like the re European graphic novels. I'm sure they'll reprint some of these later on in bigger format. We have, yeah, these are like the one, I, the ones that I haven't found a place or a home for them yet. So the next time I do a tour in 2023, you'll might see them in different places. We have like Jim Starlin, Stred Star here, the box set, and then his latest book, and then Zenith right there, which is Grant Morrison's story. There's the, uh, Curse of the Chosen. That was a series that was sent to us. Uh, th that was really, really nice. It was Flying Eye Books sent us a copy for Lydia to do an overview of. Um, I, I was given some CGC books. Well, actually, we'll look at those later. But this is so cool. This was um, put together by Super Laugh Hard. And they're just stories of Judge Dredd collecting them in the original format they were published in. So in these big oversized formats. So they're almost like custom Omnis, if you will. This was so kind of him to do. Um, and I, <laughs> I felt so horrible when he asked, do you want some more? And I just, I was like, well, yeah, but I know it's a task. So I didn't want him to keep going um, because I know how much time it takes to make these. It's, it was so wonderful. It was such a nice surprise when he sent these my way. And apologies for the lack of light. Um, I can't do this and hold a light at the same time. And also apologies because we moved. And as you can see, there's one um, spine picture missing. Yeah, so I'm so upset I can't we'll, find we still that. We've got, you know, boxes of figures. Hopefully it'll show up. Down there, some TKO books all the way at the bottom. And, and then um, here, there was an Alex Ross. Oh, yeah. The Fantastic Four. Is that Four. supposed to be there? Full circle. That's where my brother put it, so okay. I guess that's where it's supposed to be for now. And some Fanagraphics books. And some other books down there at the bottom uh, by Fanagraphics or Dark Horse. All right, moving on to these shelves. And thank you to my astonishing wife for holding the camera. But I got to squeeze in here myself. We'll talk about those books in a little bit, but let's focus back to these. What, what, what's in here? 
So we have the Terry Moore stuff, Strangers in Paradise being one of my favorite ones. And then we have Rachel Rising. I still Rising. haven't read Strangers in Paradise. One day. You should. We have these beautiful humanoids books right here. I'm so glad that they reprinted the Incal in this format. Uh, Tea Dragon Society. So it's not just European books. It's a lot of other type of books back here too. Uh, put my brother in charge of this area. And, and to give you an idea and of where we the are. that's why the, the backs of the slipcases are towards the... Uh, the front, I suppose this would be the front of the show. So we were looking at the DC books a little bit ago, and these are all where all the Omnis are, but now we're over here. So here's all the Humanoids books, back here, and Magnetic Press is back here. Then we have more Magnetic Press, and Titans, and... Uh, Dark Horse was giving us Mobius books at one time, and I was hoping they would collect more and more, but unfortunately, that kind of stopped. The Golden Age, my first second, is such a great book. Lucky Luke by Cine Books. Um, Isn't that Peter Pan over there really dark? Yeah, the Peter Pan yeah. book is one of my favorite European books. For the people that have asked me, where's your most favorite European books, that video will come in 2023. Snowpiercer and Lone Sloan, Doctor Who, Doctor which Sanchi Melanie reviewed. The Monara Library. Oh my gosh. I thought I lost those, including the erotica and Borgias, but it's right here. Good thing you didn't. Good thing I didn't, uh, because I was worried that those were lost. This is another series that's phenomenal Castle in the Stars and Tardy. Such a good box set. That was reprinted recently. And viewers over the years have sent me CGC books, and I don't really collect CGC books, but they were like, oh, it'd be cool to just have them in the background. I think Kyle sent me some, Filippo sent me some over the years. Now we move on. I promise I'll get to that in a little bit, but this is the Marvel stuff. So we have the Ultimate Universe, and my daughter put this here, because she said it belongs there. So, including the OHCs. And the standard size hardcovers, the new Avengers era. This is the Bendis era of Avengers in oversized hardcover format. And we have Avengers by Jason Aaron now, who's taking over the book. And these are my Marvel oversized hardcovers. This is where I put them. Now, some of this stuff, I'm sure you're wondering, well, don't you already have that in oversized hardcover or in omnibus format? Yeah, but. This being, again, the home of collected editions, I wanted to make sure I have these, not as backups. It's oversized. But Star just in case better. I need to do a comparison, like for example, Superior Spider-Man's coming out in an um, omnibus format, but I need to do a comparison with those. Or like paper stock and, and whatnot. Yeah, to help people know which, perhaps if they're both available, which one they would like to buy. Now I did leave room, there's a gap. Hey, look at the floor. And then <laughs> the rest of the oversized hardcovers. Now, on the opposite side of where all of the deluxe editions of Marvel Comics are, are the deluxe editions of DC books. Whether it's Rebirth up at the top, or down here, we have Black Label, Vertigo. I kept my 100 bullets just because they look so nice, and I have the Omnis as well. Ex Machina, Fables. And some more Vertigo books and Black Label line books now, as they're called. Some of these are out of print. Some of them still in print. But I did want to showcase. So where on these, these are. shelves, I recommend Mr. Miracle by Tom King and Harleen over here. Who wrote Harleen? Harleen was Stepan Sajic. And Wonder Woman. By oh, Dead Earth. Daniel Wonder Woman? Johnson. Yep. Yeah, Daniel Warren Johnson. Ooh, that one's good. These oh, are, oh, and of course, Fables. Whoa. These are like... I was thinking of what I read this year, but Fables, all uh, the way. Pride of Baghdad. Thank you, camera woman. These are like uh, album size books, so they're a little bit different. Like, there's Harleen right there. That and cool. Okay, let me show the slipcase. Compared to this, it's a little bit different. And the slipcase. Yeah, it's got that... What do they call it? Do you remember what it's I called? I can't remember. We don't remember. Let what us it's know called. in the comments. Let us know in the comments what that type of slipcase is called. Oh, not slipcase, dust jacket is called. 
they had it on Lord of the Rings, the edition that my dad had. Yeah, it had Yeah, this isn't really anything new. It's just pretty cool plastic. <laughs> All right, let's move over to Image. Okay, I said Image, but here's some Dark Horse and Antarctic Press. And some people may consider this manga, but I, you know, I collected this stuff when it was coming out here in the Western world. Here's some awesome, obscure, landscape-sized books, Echo Lands, that came out this year. Landscape size? Is that when it's like, pretty long? Pretty long, and yes. short? So, like that. Pretty long and short, sure, Melanie. Phrasing. Uh, but yes, some of these will show up again in Hidden Gems, or some of my favorite releases this year. Uh, we have these big, oversized books right here. These are published by Oni Press. These are The Six Gun, Kaiju Max, oh, Parker. Tim Sells, or Darwin Cooks, I'm sorry. Uh, Darwin Cooks' last work was right here with the Martini edition, Last Call. Sky Doll, right there. Uh, now we get to some image books. So over here we have image deluxe hardcovers. Um, and for some reason, my brother thought this, okay, whatever. Uh, thank you, Tommy. Shout out to my brother, Tommy. How many times are you going to say my brother? Because <laughs> I, I, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't point fingers either. Uh, but these are in alpha Radical order. Not Big Hearts X Criminals, we talked about in the book club. That is the $7.77 tier on Patreon. Yes, that is the Matt Fraction and Chips of And there's like an underground book club on the Discord, which is the $5 tier. Oh, uh, Invincible. And not all my deluxe oh, are covered. And in Invincible, here. that was a pick. Uh, and then club. some bigger books right here that Image did. That's what I got from. Uh, the last con we went to. No, no, no. The one in June. Yeah, this is one of my favorite books that I don't know why they did not reprint the slipcase edition. This, again, is Battle Chasers. I think I pull this out every time. Uh, it's, it's the size of, like, an absolute. But it's Joe Mad's artwork. Joe Madureira. Gosh, he was drawing anim... It, he was living who, the dream. Who drew? Rat... Rat bastards? Rat past Rat queens? Rat queens. Yeah, you know, rat bastards. Uh, that was your dad's <laughs> friend, first of all. <laughs> rat queens was a comic book it, that was published by Image. It looks, uh, it's very similar. Really? Yeah, I think to, so. To, the art style. to rat queens? Pull we're going we're gonna to pull out rat queens in okay. a little bit, but uh, no, it does not. Like, in any type of way. Okay. Well, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was ever born. Okay, first of all, that's my apology. I'm having the right, hardest time if I have both hands stuff. here. There we go, there we go. Yeah, you go to show down there. Go to show down there. Um, oh, I forgot the Luna Brothers collection up here with Girls oh, okay. and Sword and Ultra. Uh, there's Green Valley and Skyward, which is one of my favorite releases last year. Lady Mechanica, which is now being published by Image, so I think that's why I put it here. It was self-published. And let's see if I can find Rat Queen so I can, what's the word? Paper Girls. Prove you wrong. Good. Not prove you wrong. Really like Paper Girls, the comic, more than um, the show because it's more sci fi in the comic. Oh, uh, here's Rat Queens. Yeah, so Rat Queens. I can't remember who the first artist is. This is like your Dungeons and Dragons oh, fantasy type of no, art. No, you're right. It's not. <laughs> no, it's not. But that's okay. <laughs> it was just both fantasy. I, 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 I love how you, um, you know, oh, you're, man. what's the word? Uh, you're, you're doing your best. You're doing your I'm best. I'm doing my best. No, I'm just kidding. It's hard to remember all these names, right? You were, you were busy remembering actual important things in life. Uh, in in school, I was wow. busy remembering artists and things like that. Okay, this um, is from the um, camera's Weekend point of view, Divine. This is like absolute black. You can't even see there's a book uh, well, there it except is for the, absolute the black. skull. So but it's really, yeah, pull final, it out, pull it out, because it's really dark in there. It's the final two volumes of the... Okay, there we go. Wicked and the Divine. Book four, a... two-volume uh, book set. What's over here? Uh, this is a Valiant book. I don't have a lot of these because I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, even though a lot of people have tried to, like Lloyd. Oh, my buddy Lloyd sending me bloodshot. I'm sorry, Lloyd. I failed you. Uh, we have some other image books down there, including Stray Bullets. Hopefully we'll continue that run. David Lapman. Uh, that, that stuff is so good. And then starts Top Cow. Yeah, and then it's just <gasps> oh, other books. Oh, shoot. I put that in the wrong place. No, it, it's okay. Here, That's the crossovers. Okay. I know. I decided... You know what? Top Cow needs some more books there, so. Oh well, we didn't put, <laughs> I didn't put um, Darkness or Image <laughs> or uh, Witchblade there. Uh, we have other books. This is an excellent read. You might show up. Actually, I may do that one next year as a standalone graphic novel. Pacific Rim. These were sent to me, uh, Kyle. Uh, this is she, Billy Tucci. Nah, uh, gave me that copy because I had him on the show and he thanked me for make uh, ask telling him or suggesting to him really, really strongly to make this a deluxe edition. Oversized book. Uh, this is the boys, the definitive edition, and 
up here. No, that was my knee popping. Yeah. Guy in his 40s. Guy in his 40s. That's okay. Stretch. Don't forget to stretch. Um, here's some Aftershock books right here. And then, speaking of... So I was able to take, talk Billy Tushi into making that into a deluxe edition. Why do I have two copies? Oh, because he signed one for me. Mm -hmm. That's right. And one I'm giving away. Um, on our next giveaway. I could not even talk to Mark Silvestri about making these deluxe editions when he did Cyber Force. Because Matt Hawkins, who I also had on the show, uh, who wrote Postal, by the way, it's a phenomenal book, said, don't even try it. You're going to make him mad. Don't ask about deluxe editions. I'm like, but why? He's like, he likes to keep it simple, make his hardcover standard size. And I'm like, but are you sure? And he's like, I'm serious, man. I'm like, okay, I respect that. Uh, here we have some Dark Horse beautiful library editions. These are the Black Hammer, World of Black Hammer. Uh, they put out some gorgeous books. Uh, this is the Neil Gaiman library editions, which I'm hoping, like I said, the, um, what was the book you were looking at over there? The, the Norse mythology. Norse mythology. We'll be collecting in these type of formats. So these are like short stories yeah. that he wrote. Well, it's adaptations of his yeah. short stories too. That, that, yeah, that's what I meant. And I've done overviews of most of these. This is the Predator stuff, which is going to be reprinted in the Marvel Omni. Madman, there's going to be a total of five of these, I think, or even though he's pushing for six. Milk and cheese. No one talks about Evan Dorkin's milk and but cheese. But you have to say it that way. Milk and cheese. Uh, it just makes me happy. I love that stuff. Once in future. Yeah, this is uh, some boom slip cases here. That is um, gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. Dan and Mora. It was a fun story, and we read this. Was this part for, of your book club? No, 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 it wasn't. Actually, I did a comparison, or not comparison, but an old lady, badass old lady video. <laughs> what? What's a future? On my channel? And what was the other one? I'm Norse an old lady. Mythology? I can't remember. I, uh, I don't remember. Oh, the Neil Gaiman story about, uh, was it the Colleen she Doran? Found, oh, oh, oh. She the found King the, Arthur book. She found the, the chalice, the cup of Jesus. I can't remember off the top of my head. Something is Killing the Children, one of my favorite IDW books. The Kurt Busiek book right there, The Wizard's Tale. And then some other boom books right here. These oh, are being kickstarted. I believe these are being kickstarted as standard size hardcovers, not oversized deluxe editions. Invisible Kingdom, which is a gorgeous oh, show, book. Kali. Show uh, Jim and the Holograms, which I started to read, but uh, I didn't it's get It's Kelly Thompson's it. run, right? It looks like a Trapper Keeper. Kelly Thompson is a good. No, no, no. Hold it. Hold it. There you go. I don't want to get up. Open it up. Oh, um, oh dang. Okay. Oh, so, oh, it, oh, yeah. There isn't an actual Trapper Sophie Keeper Campbell. Flap. Sophie Campbell does the artwork here. <laughs> Pretty colors. And Sophie 80. Campbell is now the writer and artist of Ninja Turtles, the ongoing IDW Ninja Turtles. But this was the only collection, sadly, that was collected like this of the deluxe edition. Uh, then we move down here where we have some Oni Press books. Uh, we're going to get the monetized because you're singing that song. <laughs> And we have Wastelands from Oni Press. We have Lumberjanes here that unfortunately didn't get finished. Giant Days, which I Kickstarter volumes four, five, and six. Uh, here's volumes one, two, and three. By the way, if you're making it this far, one of the things I always do on my videos is sometimes I purposely put books out of order because it drives some people crazy. And they always point out, why are your books out of order, you Wait, madman? is that the first one, then? Because it doesn't I don't know. Maybe, you maybe, out, maybe you should uh, keep oh, watching the video. Oh, you're just going to be like, it's my brother. No, some okay, of the ones so that I didn't do. Check out, be on the lookout for out of I'm telling people to watch all my videos, books. Molly. I'm telling people to watch all my videos. Just those. <laughs> um, and then you get a no prize. Then we have some beautiful slipcase editions right here from Umbrella Academy including the fabulous Killjoys. Now, see, this one I didn't do on purpose. This is one that just got... What was my brother thinking? Gotta give a shout-out to my girl. Oh, wait, no. Elsa, yeah. That you is... had her on the channel twice, huh? uh, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, twice. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Her artwork. She's one of my favorite artists. I can't put... Yeah, put that back. Here, I'll, I'll get it. Oh, okay. But I just wanted to show off. Um, she's got a wonderful handle on like black and white the contrast like she, it reminds me of like are perfect. bruce tim you're talking about her lips or her <laughs> creations that she draws and, uh, um, bruce tim it, it's just these Darwin lines Cook. that are so fluid yeah it's it has this like timeless feel to her art i really enjoy it too 
What was the book that she did? Infinite Loop? Is mm-hmm. that what it was called? Oh, good. The Marvel Trades. Kicking it off with Marvel versus DC. I put it there. Thank you, <laughs> Melanie, for that. Ages of Atlas, all of the Spider-Man standard editions and trade paperbacks that are not part of the omnibus, including Spectacular Spider-Man here. And again, I'll be doing an updated reading order of Spider-Man in 2023. Avengers, I love the fact that I'm replacing, you know, these old trades that don't cover everything like this, for example, like time and time again. Can't wait to replace that with an actual epic collection. Uh, Marvel Masterworks, by the way, I don't really collect them anymore. I've given so many away, so people are like, why do you have them in your bookshelf then? As the home of collected editions, I have to have them as placeholders. And I know that sounds blasphemous to Marvel Masterworks collectors, but I keep them as placeholders because I know one day I'll replace it with an epic collection. Uh, I don't know. I keep going back and forth. Should I keep getting the epic collections? Because I've given so many of them away when I get them for reviews. Here's Captain America. Oh my gosh, look at all that Mark Grunewald goodness that we can get into an omnibus format. We need a couple more to wrap up. Uh, Uncanny Omar talk pretty one day. Wrap up his run. Captain Marvel. Uh, Conan. Again, these are the books that were not collected in the Colossal Dark Horse books or Marvel books. So, not sure how Titan's going to handle those, uh, but you'll hear it here first. Daredevil. Look at that. See, this is, this is the one by Dennis O'Neill. Try not to get the glare. And Mazu Kelly. That one's just staring into my soul, waiting to be replaced by an epic collection. Because look how nice that red line looks across there. There and we then go. And you get it here, and you're like, what is this <laughs> monstrosity? Um, Dazzler, Death's Head. I hope we get more Death's Head. The Defenders. Uh, then we Defenders get... Defenders of the Earth? No, no, not those guys. And then get some Doctor Strange again, one being a placeholder here. But it has been available in omnibus format. Fantastic Four. And we get, like, little events like Extreme Carnage. Because I don't know if that will be collected in something else one day. And Heroes Return. That just got finished with the fourth uh, trade I got over there, which I'll show in a little bit. More in alphabetical order. Including like little mini series like this, the Green Goblin, Hawkeye. We only have one epic, man. What's going on with that? The Hulk, love it. I think I still have some. Yeah, right here's a couple of the Peter David stuff. Bruce Jones is the run I want to see collected in omnibus format next. And of course, the Greg Pak era that I want to see collected as well. There's a lot that we can have. Iron Man, which was the very first epic collection. As a matter of fact, I'll show you the very first epic collection. Right here, that's the one that started it all. The Enemy Within, I believe this is volume nine. 10, I'm an idiot. Cancel my now. Oh my gosh, how did I mess that up? Ugh, should've gotten that. Why didn't I get that, Melanie? And here we have some more Iron Man, Fear Itself. That's the Fear List though. I don't need this. You see, I don't need this anymore. Why do I still have this? This has been collected in the Matt Fraction Omnibus, and so it's oversized, so I don't even need this standard size hardcover anymore. So we're going to put this in the giveaway pile, which I'll show a little bit later. See, it's sometimes why I need to do this, to take inventory. This is for insurance purposes. And here we have She-Hulk, Silver Surfer, more of the Punisher. We are getting a reprint of, I believe it's Circle Blood. So hopefully we'll get more Punisher, maybe at least in epic format. This is one of my favorite Punisher books right here. The Carl Potts and Jim Lee. It was journal. really interesting talking to Carl Potts at um, yeah, Heroes Con. He's a he's a great guy. I mean, he's done just about everything. Editor, uh, he did. I mean, he was working in marketing before, and then he moved over to comics. He did some artwork. There's the Thor books right there, including some that haven't been collected in trades or in Omnis rather. Thunderbolts. I've done a Thunderbolts reading order on the channel. Tomb of Dracula. I'm missing volume two. I can't find it. See, that's what happens when you move. Those are the complete collections. I'm sure it'll be epics one day. And then again, more of the Marvel stuff. So ending with Winter Guard. Really? Okay. And then some Star Wars books down there, including the original Marvel years that Dark Horse reprinted. I don't know why I didn't keep the epic collections, because I got rid of those with the Omnis of the classic years. Those are interesting spines for those Star Wars. Yeah. Seven. And, and the alien down there. Yeah, and I also have Alien in a 
That's the new Alien series. And there is an Alien Epic Collection coming out. What's Nobody, this up here? Uh, these are the digest size books. Kind of geared towards kids, but some of these haven't been printed in uh, trade. Or I don't have them in trade. I think these had a deluxe treatment. And but, the Mighty Marvel Masterworks are in a bookshelf upstairs. Yeah, those I keep upstairs for the people that are wondering, hey, what did you do uh, with all those? Those I keep upstairs. Bookshelf those, outside the girls' room. Yeah, those are special to me and the girls. Uh, here is X-Men, again, in alphabetical and in chronological order in a weird way. But, like, Exiles is here, but you also have new Exiles. You have Exiles, the spin-off, or the other series, and then when they try to relaunch it with uh, Solid and Ahmed, didn't really work. This beautiful, it's probably one of the oh, most oh, important oh, pieces I own. Oh, no, there we go. Wait a second, wait a second. There we go. Oh, I got blurry. Okay. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> you have no idea what I zoomed in on. I really hope it was her lips. <laughs> I want to get demonetized. All right, New Mutants right here. Some of this stuff has been collected in omnibus format, but some of it I keep. I know there are like complete collections that are thicker for the New Mutants, but eh, I don't know. There's some something about these skinny traits that I enjoyed, including like X Factor. I still have all the Peter David X Factor stuff, even though I have the two Omnis and we are getting a third one. All new X Factor. I hope that will be the fourth one with the uh, rest right. of the series. How many are there? 20. 21. 21. And then three more. Wow. And that's not including Madrox. I kicked it off. The Epic Collections of Wolvie. Another series. My personal favorite. <laughs> that's on the spine. The Epic Collections of Wolvie. Yeah. There's your Wolverine by Daniel Way. You just gotta throw that in there, don't you? <laughs> okay. It's not behind you anymore, though. Uh, Extreme X-Men. That's, of course, being collected in omnibus format. Will there be a second volume? Maybe. Stay tuned. Astonishing X-Men right here. This is the stuff that follows, of course, Joss Whedon's run. Uh, trade paperbacks of more X-Men adjective lists, including the very underrated Kieran Gillen run and uh, Mike Carey's run on X-Men Legacy. And down here we have Uncanny X-Men with the Marvel Masterworks and Epic Collection. Stuff that wasn't in the Omnis or aren't in Omnis yet because we don't have a Volume 5 of this video. And again, in chronological order, <laughs> the color years right here, like X-Men Red, Iceman, Jean Grey, Rogue and Gambit. And down here is the Krakoa era. You have Dawn of X, Reign of X, Trials of X, and then Destiny of X, whenever that will come out. So I have them in the series, and I also have the anthology series. Now, where are all the Omnis? Well, we're going to get to those in a minute. But first... So to kind of give you an idea of where I am now, this is where we saw the bookshelves earlier, the manga's over there, um, and then that's where the magic happens, and I'll talk about those uh, here in a little bit. The lights, I may do a little Patreon behind the scenes, I know they've been asking, uh, and then these books right here. So what, what am I looking at here? This is pretty much the shelf where uh, publishers send me books, and I, I do overviews of these books. And as you can see, it's a lot of reading. A lot of reading. And sometimes I haven't read something. It, it helps if I've read a lot of these stories already. Like, you know, I've read a lot of these in the past. So I'm ready to talk about them, but I have to refresh my brain. Uh, sometimes I'm reading a couple of the books in there, flipping through there, remembering who the artists are. That's kind of the way my brain works. Um, so I have stuff from here from Marvel and some stuff from Titan Comics, and Dark Horse, and also Humanoids down there, and Fanagraphics, Udon. So there's a lot of things that, this is where I come to talk about my weeks. I'm like, okay, I got week one, week two, week three, week four. Make sure I gotta get those in before this particular date. Sometimes I shuffle books around. So I put books up at the top that I'm like, ah, I think I'm ready to talk about those. Now this isn't everything because I have also, the way my brain works, uh, other books across over there. But first, I wanted to show you this shelf. This is the books that are coming out when you see my overviews of trade paperbacks or my overview of Omnis from Marvel Comics. Now, now in this corner of the basement is where we keep this stack of books. Now, this stack of books are books uh, that I already had that publishers sent my way or, or my viewers sent me for giveaways so this is the donation giveaway piles like so whenever we reach milestones on the channel these are the kind of books that i'll be donating or giving away rather uh, we donate to school libraries and to little libraries and to uh, actual libraries because we love the idea of 
kids reading comics. I said that as soon as I scanned over my Rogue <laughs> and Psylocke poster. That took uh, half an hour to put up. That stupid poster. But anyway, <laughs> uh, over here is some of my haul. So this is the haul that, for example, when I film in January, this will be my December haul. With the exception of My Hero Academia, that's actually going to be that's, in my um, manga That's headed out for the book club. I yeah. the first three volumes. That's what it is. So I did want to showcase this part of the room, just, uh, where I grab things and where we are, because now we're over here. So let's talk about this shelf first. All right. So now we've come to one of my favorite shelves. I always wanted a shelf of horror comics, of books that... I would consider some of the top tier. And to me, this is top tier. This is top shelf. If you have a top shelf liquor shelf at home, EC Library is where all those books belong. Like the, the top shelf. They're wonderful. I'm not sure why I'm pointing here. I'm pointing here. Uh, so Haunt of Fear, Vault of Horror, Tales from the Crypt. Some of the best books you're ever going to read. Not just comic books. Best books. Love them. Then we have the Creepy and Eerie Archives, which I need to jump back on because some of those are getting harder to find. Uh, we have, you know, horror, but not really that scary type of books, like The Goon Creepy. and Harrow County. Yeah, uh, although some people, you know, mileage may vary. Some people do get freaked out by these. So it's a mixture of, like, Dark Horse, Aftershock, and IDW books, uh, DC books, like this is the Joe Hill box set uh, and trade paperback. I believe they did individual hardcovers of those. The BPRD collection, one that I've been trying to push Dark Horse to reprint since talking to them back and forth um but nothing yet maybe one day the spawn stuff right there we did finally get a volume 11 volume 12 coming out early next year more of the magnola universe including bprd um, abe sapien of course lobster johnson then we have some more image comics like nail biter and chew morning glories the walking dead and the Revival book, which you really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Mind Management down there. Uh, Moon Shadow, if I'm not mistaken. The Joe Hill graphic novel collection. Some early Vampirella by Dynamite. That's the classic reprints. Because those aren't owned by Dark Horse, where Dark Horse can print Eerie and Creepy magazine, they can't reprint Vampirella. Now. Oh, and my comic albums from when I was a kid. I want more of these. I wonder if you could find them on eBay for my single issues that I randomly buy. There we go. Yeah, holographic. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, some other top shelf books. Or books that are just so big, I have to put them on the top shelf. Like we have Prince Valiant up there. I never did get any more of the letter 44 up. I need to wrap it up. I, I don't know if I'm... I didn't really dig it that much. You're going to see a little bit of manga in here, but these will show back up during the manga tour. But, I mean, come on. Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind, Hayao Miyazaki, and Battle Angel Alita. Oh my gosh, yes. And... Greatest Autobot leader there. Uh, Jim Lee's X-Men Artist Edition. That was a gift from Max for my birthday. That was completely unexpected. Because I don't really go down that rabbit hole. Uh, the Marvel Gallery and Treasury Editions. Tintin over here. This gigantic little Nemo book. I love this book. People always comment on this book. And how big it is every time I do one of these videos. The reprint mm -hmm. isn't this big either. This comes with its own handle. Like its own mm -hmm. suitcase. The artwork of Vampire Hunter D by Yoshi Takamano. This brings back a lot of memories. You know, 2020 was, was really rough for a lot of us. And Marvel did something like where the artists and writers were working from home in this little kid book. Um, and in the back is another little Nemo. Oh, yeah. That's, the big, that's even bigger than that one right there by Tashin. Uh, this came from Patchworks, one of my viewers. Partworks, sorry. Uh, it is the Transformers stamp collection. And it's the last time I think the Queen was used. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, you need that. And I'm like, awesome. And there's the X-Men box set. We'll come back to this in a little bit. Speaking of X-Men, X-Men right here. We have the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, the Greatest Age, Modern Age. But everything that is collected in Oversize and Omnibus Edition. So that is the one rule I break. I mix match Omnis and oversized hardcovers in chronological order. I know a lot of my viewers came to the channel because of my X-Men reading orders and now I have them behind me. I have to have them behind me. They are my favorite collections. I love X-Men so much so that I even own some X-Men that were not the greatest stories of X-Men and 
X-Men, being a fan of X-Men, it has its ups and downs. You're going to get your heart broken and stomped on sometimes. And that's okay. You get used to it because you pick yourself up because you know one day... Just like mutants. Just like the Yeah, sure. Just like mutants or Rocky. Uh, one day, there are good stories waiting for you. And there are so many great stories. Where's your volume three? It's right here. That one, I believe, has been delayed till January. So, And I just announced the volume four. It Amazing um, to have these books. Wolverine, my favorite character. Four volumes. Give me more, baby. Give me more. But yeah, these are in chronological order. They're separated by, of course, title. I think House of M has been delayed till January. Oh, there's Fantastic Four Volume 2. To kind of give you a little bit of a hint or tease, there's the spine right there. Of the, this is the reprint of the John Byrne era. And then, of course, the Avengers back here. So I keep books behind me sometimes of, like, upcoming Omnis that are coming. Upcoming Omnis that are coming. That's redundant. Uh, Darkstalkers down there in Street Fighter. I'm not sure why it's curved. I think because we moved the chair out of the way. The greatest era of Transformers. But if I were to pick one era, it would definitely be the Phase 2 era. My daughter... My oldest daughter and I have bonded over this since she's been 10 years old. We love Phase 2. And she wants to do an overview with me of Phase 2. Uh, here we have Phase 3, and that unfortunately will be the final one printed by IDW. We still need two or three more to wrap up that series. So I hope whoever the next licensor is will print them. Uh, I keep these near me because I had a big part in getting these printed, and it makes me proud of what the channel, what we have accomplished as a community, because we voted for that and Dynamite listened. Kind of like what Marvel does too, and that's what we got printed. There's Savage Avengers, which will be coming out sometime in January. These are custom Nightwing books. Those uh, were sent to me. Uh, my buddy Kyle sent me the X-Men Reunion Omni, and then there's a couple more Omnis that will be coming out next year. I know, actually, I love that cover, so I wanted just to keep it down there. As a placeholder so I said we would come up here and here we have some more top shelf books right we have the Akira box set the Legend of Zelda box set and then how much do I love the life and times of Scrooge McDuck the artist edition I believe uh, Mike sent me that one and then the big book one of my favorite book releases last year and of course the Don Rosa sets Sin City up there, and some monster editions right there. And thank you to the Astonishing Melanie for pulling that book out. So awesome. Uh, now, this is where the rest of my absolutes are. Now, these are my favorite absolutes. Uh, Day Tripper and Preacher and Swamp Thing and Sandman and, of course, Death. Of that death with Sam and Overture, Absolute Fourth World by Jack Kirby. Blew me away the second time I got to read it. Why the Last Man and some odds and ends over here. Oh, this is some other books I have to do overviews of. And this was a kind Talk gift from Marvel. These yeah, these were gifts from Marvel. This is for the, I think that was the D23 cover right there. And then this was the at the life celebration of Stanley. This were given to the people that attended. But those were gifted to me by Marvel. It was really nice. So yeah, things I don't want to ever sell. There's reminders of what we have accomplished on the channel. Uh, here's all the Batman Omnis for the people worried. Like, where's your Batman Omnis? They're here. Don't worry. Uh, some books that I found on eBay over the years. Some custom books. That haven't seen print. And there's the Colossal Conan stuff. Still some of my favorite books. Big Damn Sin City and Red Sonia right here. Hopefully the Red Sonia we get next year. The classic stuff. I hope it'll be oversized too. Speaking of oversized, one day we'll get Starman in oversized format. And the reason I kept Swamp Thing is because those are the original colors. There's the Yosaga Yojimbo collection and some other odds and ends. Mighty Morphin. I don't have Necessary Evil Part 2. That one is upstairs right now. And then some of my favorite manga, of course. Berserk and Blade of the Immortal making room for others. Rest in peace, Miura. 
the library editions of Rick Remender's books. Fear Agent finally coming back out to print next year, as well as Tokyo Ghost coming back to print next year. So happy for the people that missed out on those. Some of my favorite books, and I could not find some of them, um, so I had to get the trade paperback of Akira, but hopefully one day these will be collected in some kind of format. Uh, then we have Incal and Upgrade sold down there. And you may see some comics behind me from time to time. It's usually a stack that I keep from my long boxes. Oh, I love this Scrooge statue. I didn't even talk about that. Just... You said he was an odd in an end. Did I? Odd in? You said, here's some odds oh, and ends. I'm tired. That's it. Now, if you're wanting to purchase some of these books, check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my book tour of 2022. You made it this far. Thank you all so much for watching, for sharing my videos throughout the years, for smashing that like button, and all the people that have sent us so many books to give away during our huge giveaways that we have, or to add to my collection. I could not be making these type of videos without you all. We have a wonderful community that we've built here. And if you want to be a big part of that community, we do have a Patreon that starts at a dollar and we have different tiers to meet your needs. That's all in the description of the video. Not sure why I'm pointing down there. I assume that's where the description is when you're watching this on your phone or whatever. But seriously, I will see you in 2023. No, no, wait. Or you can just watch all my videos between now and then, 2023. That's it, everyone. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Much love. Oh, and a big thank you to my wonderful wife for recording this. Thank you, Astonishing Melanie. Stay minty. Just had to throw that in there.